Hi folks, Lance from Runtime. Hope you're having a great start to your week. Now last week I showcased Next Step, which was an operating system developed by Steve Jobs company Next, which then morphed into Mac OS when uh, Apple brought Next. But in those days, there were a lot of other operating systems knocking around. So let's have a quick look at the history of operating systems. So if you go down here, you can see that uh, Unix uh, came around in 1970. And then we had the PC revolution emerged in the 80s. We had PC-DOS, we had CPM. And then of course, we had some offerings from Apple as well with their operating systems. And then of course, Windows came along. But before Windows, there was OS2. Now Windows is really just a skin on top of DOS. It wasn't preemptive operating system, but OS2 was a full preemptive operating system Windows NT it was launched in July 1993 whereas if you go back to OS 2 it was launched way way back in 1987 you can see there's a big gap between OS 2 when it was launched to when NT was launched somewhere around July 1993 there was another operating system around at the time called BIOS and this was launched in 1995 that's what it looked like and I'm going to demonstrate this BIOS fortunately it wasn't very successful because Apple went and bought next and of course there's a lot of history between Steve Jobs and Apple so the natural conclusion even though they paid a big big price now it was a great move for for Apple because of the history so sometimes it's not always the technology that wins through I'm going to be demonstrating all three operating systems to give you guys an idea of the minimum requirement hardware requirement for each operating system and how small it was compared to today and also the actual functionality of these different operating systems which were released in that sort of time span in history I've got all these operating systems loaded up on VirtualBox. Let's go to Warp. There you go, there's Warp. Let's look at the hardware at the moment that I've allocated to this particular virtual machine. You can see it's very, very low spec for today's standards. You've got 128 gigs of RAM, you've got 16 gigs of video RAM, and you've got a two gig drive. And that's not a lot of hardware compared to today. So let's give it a, a boot up and see what happens. So you're gonna boot up now into VirtualBox. And there you go, there's the famous OS2 Warp logo. So it's booting up now and I've got it running at quite a high resolution so I'm just going to minimize this it's going to session will contain an active pro do you want to close it let's just close this this I used it very very briefly because Windows was still the main operating system used but I did have a play around with this when it first came out I thought it was pretty good I was blown away with it there weren't enough programs available at the time in the early days of the internet the browser didn't exist. Netscape was one of the first companies that brought out a browser which became very, very popular and then Microsoft went after it, uh, produced their Internet Explorer and just dominated the market through marketing even though it wasn't as good as Netscape. Let's go to the Google website. Let's see what comes up. You can see Google does come up, but obviously the browser is very, very old. It can't interpret all of the modern web programming languages. And so you're not going to see that rich experience that you normally see on a modern browser. Down here, you have the start bar. This is really what Windows took on as well. And this was the idea of the Windows collaboration with IBM and IBM kept that idea of the start bar and this is how you navigate through and you got these depths of folders that you can go along to find what you're looking for. You got your drives, your printers, your websites, OS2 system, programs, so you got all these different folders with different programs in them you can navigate. At the bottom you got some icons as well for different things like searching. You got the disk space monitor there which shows you the space available on the hard drive you got the drives themselves down here and printers volume that's the for the sound you've got the system set up and you've got the command prompts let's go and have a look at some of these let's go to the system and then here you've got system setup so you got the hardware manager which just shows you all of the different interrupts dma io memory if it's memory mapped so this is pretty cool so you can do a quick diagnostics on your hardware to see what's working what's connected what's not connected what ports are being utilized you've got tcp ip configuration multimedia setup so you've got compact disc digital video player so obviously the none of this stuff is working because this is very old software now. Install and remove software, we know that we got that in Windows now and this is device driver installation etc. So you've already, you've got all that in Windows now. Mouse, keyboard, lots of different things to play around with. If you haven't used this, go to the internet, download the image and give it a spin up. You'll be pleasantly surprised what was available back in the day. You can do window in window. So this is the program manager. This is actually how Windows NT behaves. But let's get out of here. I don't want to be 
thinking this is really old school. This is the integration between Windows and OS2. Because, you know, the success of an operating system is really reliant on the applications that are available. If you've got a great operating system and no apps, it's not going to be that popular because people won't be able to do much with it. So you've got the folders, as you see, in a tree structure. So you can go off and look at all these different uh, folders and, and files within folders. A really good way to navigate. See that some of the images that are available. So we just have a quick gander at that. Flowers. A lot of it's not going to work. So let's get out of this now and let's go on to the next operating system. So we shut this down. That's how you shut it down. So you click right, go to shut down, bang, wallop, and it's going to close. And there it is, pretty quick, and we can close that VM now. So let's go to the next operating system. It's going to be Windows 3.51. Let's boot it up and see what it looks like. And you guys, like myself, you would see this familiar login screen. Remember this? This used to be quite popular. I had this. I had a Windows NT workstation. So you log in and bang wallet this is what it does so do you remember the program manager that i showed you earlier on os2 this is the program manager for windows that's what it looks like pretty basic if you think about it it's very very simple interface and it's a leftover from windows 3.0 this is the uh, the file manager it's very similar to what we have in os2 all the os2 was a little bit different and so and there you can navigate so it's a very good file manager you can do a lot with it uh, so have a play with that now you've got your control panel so here you can set up different aspects of your hardware, your screen, your FTP server. You can do task management here. You can prioritize if the tasks should be in the foreground, the background. This is a full preemptive operating system now in T. You've got virtual memory you can set up as well. Services, and this is where you can look at the processes running. You can stop and start those processes. So this is really the task manager that you see today. Awesome. So you can see the beginnings of something really, really super strong and robust, multitasking, preemptive, multi-threading operating system. So that's Windows NT. Nothing fancy. I mean, it, it was okay for the time. It did the job, but it was the first preemptive multi-threading operating system that Microsoft actually brought out. So now let's get on to the final operating system of the time, BIOS. So let me shut this down. Close down the VM. So let's get into our final operating system back in the day, BIOS. I'm gonna go to our VM and I've got BIOS here. So I'm gonna kick that off. It's a very quick boot up, very quick, but this is Unix, beautiful interface. This has got these really nice cute little icons. And the way that you access all of the different applications is by clicking left here and going down. And it's kind of similar kind of idea to OS2, whereby you're navigating through to pick the particular application you just simply slide down and then you can get to them very, very quickly. Shut down, restart. You can also do a global find of the operating system if you want to find something. So if you go to, if you go to demo, it'll find you the file. It's very, very fast. What I found about this operating system is not only does it look elegant, not only is it multitasking, multi-threading, multi-processor. So this is pure Unix compliant. So this is the file manager. This is what it looks like. So if we go to optional here, I can show you some demos here. So if we go in here, you can see movie so this is multitasking so let me just bring up a movie for you so here's how it would come up so we'll just open it up and it's, it's in a loop so we're just going to let that one run this one as well let that run we'll run another one here as well in the background and we'll run several of them right just see what happens right so we're going to run all of them up here there's no drop frames it's running smooth as as can be so they've even left some sample code in here and we've got c plus plus look in there let's double click on there what do we see Oh, look at that. It's opened up a editor and we've got some C++ code down here. I think this operating system is awesome. So hopefully that's been useful and educational and a little bit of a walk down memory lane. So I will be demonstrating one final operating system for you in the next video, but I'm not going to go into that now because that's really for the embedded environment. It's a microkernel based operating system. I'll demo that in the next video. So until then, have yourself a great week. And if you want to reach out to me, it's lance at runtimerec.com. Here at Runtime, we place engineers around the world with awesome companies. So if you're an engineer, maybe you want to reach out to me and my team. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.